Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. I'm here with my very good friend Trevor. Welcome back, sir. Nice to be back. Thank you. I'm terribly sorry about the whole accident with your ear because, wow, you gotta show him that. Let's, let's get a close up in on this. Look what happened. To, this is, never play golf with people you can't trust because they will actually ram a golf tee uh, through your yeah. ear. But I told you, man, you can't make bets with these people. You got, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna talk like that, you've gotta actually have $1,000 in your pocket. <laughs> I, I had the same problem. It was a nail gun for me. It's a, yeah, you don't wanna know, but it's a whole thing. So today, we, we're back after last week where we did this. And we built a fabulous secondary coil form for our Tesla coil, okay? And it's a four inch diameter, it's about 24 inches long, and we put it on the toilet flange base. So all the people at home, if you're following along on this, four inch pipe, 24 inch winding, and a toilet flange is the base. Nice and simple and easy, and it's stable. It'll stand up right on its own, and you're set. And all you gotta do is just add a power supply, and you know, you're, there you go, Tesla coil. Now that we know how big the coil is going to be, we have to find a suitable power supply. Right. Almost universally, for guys at your level where it's your first Tesla coil, you want a little tabletop thing at home, absolute best power supply is a neon sign transformer. They're ubiquitous, they're cheap, they're safe, because this is current limited, so you can't easily kill yourself with it. <laughs> you can kill yourself with it, but you're gonna have to work for it. You have to like, or rub yourself down with salt water and stand in the rain and curse at the moon or so I don't know, it's a whole thing. But just, it will kill you, but not as quickly as like something that isn't current limited, like a, a microwave oven transformer Sounds or something fun. like that. Yeah. Also, because it's internally current limited, you can just plug it in. So you don't have to mess with resistive ballast or inductive ballast or anything like that. It's much easier. It's, it's a binary device. It's on, it's off. You don't really need a variac. And for a coil at this level, it's not that big a deal. For big stuff, you have to have a variac. So we're trying to keep this as simple as we can. And I wanted to take a minute and talk about transformers and how they work and what they are and as they impact your project. And that's gonna be the focus of this video. So that's it, today's video is transformers. Okay, cool. All right, we'll be right back with transformers. Here at the Geek Group, we've invented a new fundraising strategy. You can now purchase impressively tiny coins we've compressed using high-energy magnetism. We induce a current pulse of 100,000 amps into a copper wire coiled around a golden dollar, dime, or quarter, producing very powerful opposing magnetic fields that compress a quarter to the diameter of a dime, which you then receive in a lovely commemorative package along with the satisfaction that can only come from helping the Geek Group build our endowment, which in turn will allow us to put membership fees, donations, and sponsorships towards furthering the organization rather than just maintaining it. Carry a lightning bolt in your pocket. Available at thegeekgroup.org. All right, so there you go. Now let's break this down for people and show them how they work. Neon sign transformers are great because they're cheap. Like you can buy one of these new for a hundred bucks in that area. The big thing that you're looking for though isn't the nice shiny new ones. You want old and crusty. So the way to get these is you go to junkyards, you go to salvage places because a lot of people take them out of buildings. They'll tear a building down, they'll have a dozen of these in the front of the building or something. We found one of these just by surprise, when we got this building, there was one down in the basement okay. for a neon sign that had been there 20 years ago, and the transformer went into collection. We actually use it. Nice. The new ones have one thing that the old ones don't. All of them look usually like this. There's variations on a theme, but it's usually a brick with two big terminals and two little terminals and a ground lug like that. Now, what these are is bushings, and a bushing is, I need a marker, a bushing is where you have a metal box, okay, and that's, that's our neon, or yeah, that, that's our transformer box, like that. And a bushing is, because the box is tied to, is the, the box is ground. Okay. okay, so let's just assume the box is ground. Well, you need to get high voltage through to get to the output terminals, the big bolts on the sides. And the low voltage block is just a block of plastic with two through it. And then there's the other block and the bolt. Okay. Inside, these connect, it's a hair thin wire. It's, it's hair thin wire on the high voltage side. And inside you've got your big iron core. And on that core you've got a winding and then the big center winding, and then another little winding, and this winding goes off here, and this winding goes off here, and the center winding goes off like this, 
And then these two connect together and go down to here. Because the people that make these are really cheap. And all these transformers are like 12 or 15,000 volts. Well, it's really hard to insulate for 15,000 volts. And you get, if you, if you go from here to here, you get 12 or 15,000 volts, depending on what it's labeled for. This one is a 12,000 volt secondary. But it isn't actually a 12,000 volt transformer. It's a 6,000 volt transformer. That's why there's three windings inside. You've got winding one, two, and three. Each one, two is your primary winding. So that's your low voltage. That's your 120 volt. That's the primary winding. Okay. Well, that hooks to this transformer here. And this transformer is the one side of the transformer is grounded. OK, so it's connected to ground. And it connects to the, the single core. And it goes out here. So here you get 6,000 volts. And then the same thing happens here, but this transformer is wound backwards, so it's out of phase. So this transformer is 6,000 volts. So if you looked at it on an oscilloscope, and you've got your zero line here, it looks like this. When this transformer, when, when the voltage on here is at its peak, up here at, we'll say this line is 6 kilovolts, positive. Then there's another line down here at 6 negative. Well, when the cycle is up here for this transformer, this side is down here. And they're out of phase with each other. So you get two opposite waveforms that are always out of phase. So across these two, you get your 12 kilovolts, because from 6 minus to 6 plus is 12. Right. So that's how they do it. But that way, because if this was 12 kilovolts, the insulators would have to be twice the size, and they'd have to insulate it twice as much. And they're like, hey, we can cut our costs in half and save a ton of money if we only make these for six. So, and that works because if you're building a little coil and you only need 6,000 volts, well, you can just use one side and ground the other terminal. And you've got a six kilovolt transformer. Okay. And big, like, pole pigs in that, like the big pole mountain transformers, frequently only have one horn, one high voltage terminal, and the other side is ground. And that's how they do that. These. Also, they, they have all that inside, but a lot of the newer ones have an extra thing, and the extra thing sucks really bad. You can see our high voltage terminals, right. the bushings, because it's, it's where it passes through into the box. It's not just a terminal. It doesn't connect to the box. The insulator touches the box, and the wire goes through a hollow tube. So this isn't an insulator. It's a bushing. They also have, and we'll let the guys close up right here. You can see it. I'll spin it around. There's this button right here. That's the reset button. And that button is for the ground fault circuit interrupt. And what that is is the lawyer button. It's for, oh, you'll hurt the children. You'll burn the building down. We and can't they have this. It's, don't want lightning. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super safe, and they suck. And it keeps buildings from burning down, which is really cool. But for using it for a Tesla coil, where we're doing all kinds of weird stuff, and it's absolutely not what the transformer is expecting, it sucks really bad. So what we're going to do here is show some basics of how these work and how people can test them at home. Because frequently, if you get one of these out of a junk pile, it'll be dead in some way. And the way they almost always fail is they'll carbon track internally. So one side, because you've got two separate transformers, one side will die. Oh. And then it won't work for the neon sign shop, and they'll throw it away. So this is how you can test it. What you do is you wire it up here, and you just take a plug, a regular computer power cord, and inside that power cord, you're going to have three wires. And it'll be a green one, a black one, and a white one. And you just hook them up like this. I don't know why we have jumper wires, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> but you just hook it up with black and white on the two low voltage terminals. Doesn't matter which is which. They don't care. And then you've got a, a ground connection, which is the green wire. And that's the bare lug. And we'll show you that right here. That's, that's the green connection here. So you've got your two low voltage connections here. And then your green lug here, that's your ground for safety. And you're absolutely going to want to hook that up for what we're doing. And then you just take a piece of wire and hook it on one of the ends, like that, and twist it around a drum. I use a drumstick because I'm a drummer. And that's, that's our drumstick probe of science. And this length is absolutely enough because you'll find that this won't actually jump very far. You could hold this up here and be totally safe. Oh. But you want to be back a ways for safety. Now, since this works off a separate little transformer. And this is a separate little transformer. And they're center tapped. It's grounded to the middle. 
if, I, if this is working, I should be able to arc this to the case, and I should get, well, this is a 15,000 volt transformer, so I'll get a 7,500 volt spark. Oh. So we'll set this aside like that. And we'll plug it in. And you can hear the transformer hum, but you can't count on that. You won't always hear it. Sometimes they're totally silent. Now, if this is working, I should be able to arc this right over here. And we get an oh, arc. Yeah. See? And we get, but look how, here, we're at, I'm actually going to unplug this so that we can move it so the overhead camera can see us. Because people like that, that overhead kitchen shot. Now we'll plug it back in. Now, look at that. And now look how close it has to be. Like, that's, that's an inch away right now. And it's not arcing. OK, now we'll go down to about 3 quarters of an inch. Still nothing, but you can hear it. Oh, yeah. You can hear the corona. And it's trying really hard. It wants to arc. Now we're down to about a half inch, and it arcs. And that can arc all day long. And it won't hurt the transformer, and it won't trip a circuit breaker, because we're only going to draw 60 milliamps max. Now, so it'll do that all day long. Would it be bad? We can actually arc all the way to the other side if I had a longer wire. So oh. we'll, get, we'll get that, and we'll show people about that in a second. So we know this side of the transformer is good. Now, if you touch that wire, even if you touch the insulated part, it will bite you because that wire, that's just THHN regular house wire. It's only insulated to three or maybe 600 volts. And it's not going to stop seven and a half thousand and it's going to hurt really bad. So don't touch the wire. But if you touch the case, it's totally fine. So I could touch the case and it would. You could, if, if you touch the case while it's doing that, you won't get bit because the case is grounded and you're grounded when you touch a case and you're cool. If you touch the other side, it will hurt really, really bad. <laughs> and it, I've been bit by an NST. And just accept the fact, and for the parents at home, it's going to happen. Just deal with it and accept it. If your kid's playing with this stuff, he's going to get bit. And he's going to cry, and it's going to hurt like heartbreak. It hurts really bad. This is nothing like you know sticking your finger in a wall socket and it kind of tingles. No, no, no. That's 120 volts. This is 15,000. <laughs> it's going to hurt. It's just unreal. And it's, it's a level 10 hurt, where it's not a conscious thing of like, ow, that hurts. It's just, ah! ow. And, and just, it's this moment of instant terror. It's like getting tased. It's unimaginably oh, that, that, painful. Yeah. yeah. And, and you will learn. So the first thing that you learn when working with this stuff is if you're going to reach out and touch the transformer, the electrical components, unplug it. <laughs> And watch this. This is your huge high-tech safety lesson, OK? Unplug the transformer. Put the plug in your pocket. And that will ensure, if you always put the plug in your pocket, there's no way this can hurt you. And whenever possible, you can't always, but try whenever possible, put your hand in your pocket, too. One hand. Because if you get bit like this, it hurts really, really bad. If you get bit like this, where it goes through both arms and across your chest, you die. Oh. That's, if you're going to kill yourself with an NST, that's how you're going to do it. That or you'll zap yourself and fall off the ladder or something like that. <laughs> Which is how a lot more people die with neon sign transformers, because they're working up on signs. So they get bit and they fall off the ladder. Oh. And it isn't the shock that gets them. It's falling off the damn ladder and breaking their neck. That's how they get killed. So we've got this. But when you're working on it, try to use one hand. And just keep one hand in your pocket or behind you whenever you can. Now, you can't always do that. And it's a pain in the butt. But it is a good safety practice, especially if you're really new to things and you're still not quite comfortable around it. So I need, I need that nut. By the way, on almost all neon sign transformers, the hardware on the end, the nuts and bolts, are almost always quarter 20, which is a really common size that you can get in any hardware store. And you can order stuff. Like stock up, because we do, stock up on quarter 20 hardware from boltdepot.com, our fabulous sponsor. So yeah, see? See how I work that sponsor shot in there like that? That's why I make them big money. So we'll hook this on here. And now we can test the other end and see if this transformer works. Now that we know we're safe, we set the, because you got to remember, the transformer is the only thing that's hot. Now this, this is hot too. And it's right out here. So we pull the thing out of our pocket, and we make sure we're well clear. And the transformer is good. That one seems to be a little more jumpy. Whew. 
And the air currents in a room will affect it a lot too, like oh, that. Okay. Sounds like a small Tesla core. Yeah, it's 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 got that nice 60 hertz hum. It's a little bit of a lower note if you're in England. Because everything in Europe runs at 50 hertz. It makes the math way easier. <laughs> so we've got that, and now we'll set our wire down. So now we've covered the basics of neon sign transformers. Now the other things you need to know is they come in a bunch of different sizes. The holy grail is a cold cathode tube transformer. They're huge, they're big, beefy things, and they'll, they'll have power levels that'll go up to like 750 milliamps. They're just insane. Um, they're also really rare and hard to find. What you really are looking for is a 15,000 volt, 60 milliamp transformer. So here, we'll write that down for the people at home. That's 15, and they never write KV, they always have it all out, so it'd be 15, thousand volts and that's 60 milliamps. Why do you need 60 and not 30 milliamps? It's twice the power. Volts times amp. Now I know it's AC. <laughs> Shut up. We're keeping it simple. They're new to this, okay? As a rule, it's only true in DC circuits, but for simplicity, volts times amps equals watts. Okay. So if you have 60 milliamps, you have twice as much power as your 30 milliamp transformer. Right. More power is always better. Right. Um, and if you look at these, they're, they're always very well labeled. If the transformer is still in good enough condition where you can read the label, but we'll let them see the label here and you can't read it at all on the overhead camera because it's too far away and nobody zoomed it in. So we'll turn around and we'll see if Jabroni can get it. We'll try. So people at home can see it. Let them zoom way in and see if you can read that. I think that's the best we can get. But you can see it says 15,000 volts and primary is 120 volts. Oh no, that's a catalog number. Is a 15,060 P. Well, it's because it's 15,000 volts secondary, 60 milliamp output current. And that means it is 890 VA. Now a VA is a volt amp. It's kind of like a watt. And here's the Wikipedia article where you can learn that it's kind of like a watt. So yeah, VAs, it's, it's, it gets weird. I know, I totally butchered that. And we're going to leave it in the video because I should have looked at this camera, but I was over here. I should have been here, but I wasn't. I was over here. OK, Trevor, it's very important that we talk to this camera okay. and not that one. That's the close-up camera. And if you keep doing this, if you just watch, look here, and then look there, and then look here. And then there, and here, and here, and here, and here. And now when they edit that, we just gave him like three hours of work. And that's the payback for before when we were setting up. And he was harassing me, because he's, he's the guy that has to edit that. And that's like three hours of like, and he's back, and he's forwards, and he's back. And I hate my job, and I want to die. And yeah, that's Corey's life, though, and we're OK with that. Now, what questions do you have? Give me anything that I may not have covered. What do you want to know? I think you pretty much covered it. I think I'm trying to like remember everything there is to know about the basics for this, but yeah, I think we got just about everything. All right, if you have any questions, I keep trying to look over there out of habit. If you have any questions or comments um, that you want to know about neon sign transformers, comment on the video and we'll answer anything we didn't cover. There's a lot to it and I'm trying to pack it all into one little video just to give you guys the basics to get started. But um, some people are going to ask, how can they get more powerful than this? For a single thing like this, you could run this on like five of these all hooked together. And once we get it built, we'll do a video. We actually have a video in the Geek Group archives of phasing NSTs and how you can run multiples of these together. So if you look through the Geek Group channel, you can find a video on that. And you should watch it too, just because it's a cool video. That may be back in the Mohawk years. That's, Mohawk that's years? A, there was a time. I can't see it. You can't give me any, pro any grief. You, you've got a golf tee stuck in your ear. OK, I, I don't want to hear it. I had a red mohawk last year. OK, well, I had a blue one. Oh. It, it's a geek group thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the basics for neon sign transformers. And for this coil project, we're going to loan you this one to build your coil and get it going. OK, okay so we're going we're gonna to help you out with that. So because this one doesn't have GFCI, which makes it easier. I do want to try and like we'll keep an extra one through the process, because they're interchangeable. You can just swap it out. And we'll build one, when, as we build this, we'll use a GFCI one in it so that we can show people the problems and the differences and how to surmount that and all that jazz. So that's this week's video.
it's in. Next week, we're going to start on the, uh, the, like the base. We're going we're gonna to build the table, and I've got a really cool idea that I've never done before with like a, a movable primary coil form so that we can change, because where the primary sits on this, like the height of the primary, will change the coupling. What do you mean? Well, we're magnetically coupling the primary coil form to the secondary coil form. There's no electrical connection, it's all magnetic. So if it's further down, our coupling reduces, and the higher up it goes, the more the coupling, the, the tighter the coupling is. If the coupling's too high, we'll get racing arcs and all kinds of stuff like that. If the coupling's too low, we don't get optimal power transfer. So we're gonna make yours in a way where we can adjust it to really dial in the coupling. So that's gonna be a neat thing that I've never done before. And that'll adjust the size of the? It'll, it'll adjust how big the arcs are, how much energy goes through. Okay. So it's gonna be a thing. So you want to come back next week and we'll build a base? I'd love to. All right. So thank you, sir, thank for coming you. down and rocking out. I'm really, we can fix that. I just, a pair of dikes. We'll just cut it right off. Nobody will even know. It's bad enough you're going to, I know what you need. And I'm going to get it for the next video. I know. I know. I, I got just the thing. What? All right, I'm not going to tell you. It's going to be a surprise. But we'll, we'll see oh, when no. we come back for the next video. All right. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Trevor Kenyon. You guys are awesome. We will see you next time here on The Geek Group. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and call your mom. She misses you. See you next time, guys. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.